Here's a short video to review the MOD onlay preparation for gold on a max lay first molar. You see we're starting with the 57 burr, which is a carbide which measures one millimeter in diameter. And it's kind of nice because you want to have approximately one millimeter of reduction on the non-functional cusp for an onlay so that it's more aesthetic, it doesn't show gold, and the patient smiles. And you can use the diameter of the burr to judge how much you're reducing on this particular area. Try to follow uh, the natural inclines of the triangular ridges. When we do the lingual side, I typically just go straight across the mesolingual cusp, the facial incline, and create kind of a heart shape. And then across the distal lingual, create more of a triangular shape. It's good to keep your burrs lined up properly so they don't gouge into the opposing inclines. We're now working on the A-plane, also known as the functional cusp bevel. And we will utilize the burr once again by judging how deep it's going into the tooth by looking at the thickness of the burr to get the approximate reduction we need. We're probably a little under-reduced at this point, giving us a little room for maybe a little smoothing. After getting the occlusal done, let's move on to the isthmus area, the occlusal part, and I'm using a 330 carbide, which is a burr which is convergent, and it's really not the shape we want on these walls, so we need to lean to compensate. The reason why I use this burr is that it cuts very effectively. We're not deepening the isthmus in the middle so much as we are just widening it from a zero point widening it so that we end up getting approximately 0.5 to 1 millimeter of wall height at the isthmus. When we're finished, we're going to want to have about one-third of the intercuspal distance included in the isthmus area. Anything less than that would be kind of artificial. We're now ready to drop the boxes. We'll use a 169L. And make a little slit down the middle, leave a little piece of tooth structure on the side to protect the tooth from being damaged. We're talking about the adjacent tooth, of course. Ultimately, we're, we're going to need to have a one millimeter deep axial wall. In other words, the width of the gingival is one millimeter. How far down do we push the burr gingivally? Well, we need to do that far enough to break contact, get rid of the caries and old restorative material. And usually it's going to leave an axial wall height that'll be about three millimeters tall. Could be taller, could be less. It's less critical than the overall need for a retention and resistance form. I like the 169L because it's skinny and you can fit it into areas without worried about hitting the adjacent tooth and you can get your extensions. Remember the extensions on an MOD gold onlay are more than an amalgam. They're going to be at least 0.5 up to about a millimeter, depending on where you're located. Sharp instruments like an enamel hatchet or an off-angle chisel, bin angle chisel, or any type of sharp flat-ended chisel are really helpful to get the initial form of the box figured out. Notice that we're breaking contact in all areas, although it's a bit conservative in some areas. We can drop the box a little bit further gingerly if we need to in order to obtain enough clearance for the needs of the gold restoration. Remember, you need to pack cord. I'm using a dry erase pen right here, a little bit of a green uh, splotch there on the lingual and the facial to highlight what happens when we perform the shoulder. And on ladies, we need to have a shoulder on the functional cusp, not the non-functional, the functional cusp. And it needs to be a millimeter wide and it needs to have taper towards the occlusal. So we're going to be utilizing a 171, which measures one millimeter at its tip. And we're going to be placing this shoulder at approximately the same level as the pulpal wall. Initially, when you use this, you're going to create a butt joint finish line.
And remember that this shoulder extends all the way into the boxes on both the mesial and distal. It's great because you can use the tip of the burr as a depth gauge. At this point, I'm going to reduce a little bit more of the A plane and B plane with the 169L because we were a little conservative in our initial reduction. The amount of clearance we want here should be 1.5 millimeters. On the facial cusp, it's 1.0 millimeter. Why is it less on the facial? Aesthetics. We want to preserve more of the natural tooth structure so when the patient smiles, we don't show an unsightly display of gold. Don't forget there's going to be a drop between the mesolingual and distolingual cusp of approximately one millimeter. 7102 is a carbide that has got a small tip on it, and this is great for creating a 0.2 to 0.3 millimeter contra bevel. We don't want to have this margin end with sharp enamel rods so that they could be easily chipped off. A similar process occurs on the lingual side where we need to make a bevel that's a little bit wider. This bevel doesn't need to be so narrow because it's not an aesthetic concern. It needs to be more robust and supportive of this area where there will be significant amount of force due to the functional cusp. You notice that the burr is also trimming the functional cusp while it's creating the bevel. I don't think there's any problem with this. In fact, I think it works out quite well. We're now ready to place the gingival bevels, and for this I'm going to use the H248S carbide. Now this carbide measures 60 degrees downward inclination, so you'll be able to create a nice slip joint bevel of 60 degrees. Use the side of the tapered portion of the burr back and forth to do the bulk of the work. Repeat the process on the distal. burr is not able to get into the line angles on the facial and lingual sides at the gingival. And so in order to complete the bevel, you're going to need to use some type of gingival margin trimmer that has been modified to be 60 degrees. We can start in the middle and move it over towards the lingual. Flip the instrument around once again, starting in the middle and pushing towards the facial. And you can see that little piece of tooth structure that just snapped off there. That was not an area that the burr could get to readily without creating an undercut. At this point, I believe the preparation is completed and we're looking at a final MOD onlay preparation for gold on the maxillary for a smaller tooth number three. And this is the Kilgore type it on. Well, I hope this video was somewhat helpful for you, those of you that are attempting to perform this quite difficult preparation for gold. I think it's well worth it if you give it a try. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos from our site. All the best.